Welcome everybody, Midlife Vices, another episode. Welcome, Dano. Uh, I am here as always with Jim. What's going on, Jim? And joining us tonight is Tara. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, Jim, before I uh, moved on. But... I didn't say anything. <laughs> I, I'm, just, I'm just really happy with your intros sometimes. Yeah. It's not really nice. <laughs> it, 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 the whole illiterate part makes me happy. <laughs> That's good. There's another thing I like, but I already forgot it. So the dog. I already, reading. Yeah, no. the dog reading. I like I that. Much of that. Mm. No. <laughs> uh, dogs can't read. That's just. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, yeah, uh, yeah, and I am true. Steve, as, as it says there on my name. So uh, yeah. So what have you guys been up to this week, Jim? What, what's going on with you? What's new? Uh, let's see. We had a fire at one of our uh, hog confinements. That was fun. Oh, my. Yeah. So we uh, we lost a building. Oh, no. And, uh, meh. Not a big deal. <laughs> uh, let's see. I don't have enough buildings to feel like that. I'm glad everybody's okay, though. Yeah, yeah. Well, the building was empty. It couldn't have happened at a better time. We had no mm -hmm. hogs in it, no people in it. So, uh, perfect. Yeah. Yeah. What are you going to do? You know, <laughs> this is our third December in a row with like a catastrophe. So we had we had a tornado three years ago. I remember that one. Has it been three years already? Three years ago. Then last year we we lost all our heat in our house during a blizzard. Oh, know, so we went, you know, uh, my wife and the kids were away for three days, and me and the dog were upstairs. And then uh, this year we had a fire. So at least this one wasn't ours; it was my in laws. But still, mm -hmm. it affects our whole family. So, so. Uh, that was exciting. Uh, other than that, not much until we get to the best of or the worst of. You know. Okay, awesome. Awesome. And as you can see there on the bottom of the screen, we have Tara with us. Uh, Tara has been, uh, yeah. Did we not, did we not know, introduce her? Did I just jump right in? <laughs> no, no, you're good. No, I introduced hey, her, but we didn't, we didn't let her introduce herself. Um, Tara does some things online, and she's, she's around and about, and you've probably seen her. Places you made it uh, made her just sound like a Russian bot or something. <laughs> yeah, right, right. So yeah, so tell us a little bit about what you do, Terry. You do some other shows, and um, yeah, just a little bit about you. Um, so, hi everybody. I'm Tara, and um, and people call me Tara all the time. So, <laughs> and we have never talked out loud to one another before. So it's a big it's night so, for the so group. It's Tara. <laughs> it's Tara, Tara, but that's okay. That's the Indian pronunciation instead of the Irish pronunciation. It's okay, because I am like one one hundredth Indian. Cool. <laughs> I'm with you. And so he goes by John. It's John. <laughs> yes. It's G Y N Jim. <laughs> oh gosh, mine is really spelled this way. Either way, though, it's it's a name yeah. in both in both languages. Anyway, um, yeah. So I was just saying before we started recording that I'm diving deep into some Batman right now because we're recording um, our third installation of some of the Grant Morrison run on the end pod. And we'll be taping that Saturday morning. Um, also streaming occasionally with for one night only and just generally hanging out <laughs> in one place or another. So uh, I didn't. So, so I brought it up and then we didn't answer. What's mm -hmm. your favorite Batman run? Well, I can't pick a whole run. I think there's just storylines that I like. Um, I started off getting hooked after I read Arkham Asylum, which is kind of a twisted place to start, I guess. But um, but this is my first time reading the Morrison run, and it has been pretty difficult, to be honest. I wasn't expecting it to be. Um, like I knew there were, I knew there were things that I was going to be excited to see for myself, but I was kind of not. How can I put it? I'm surprised about how difficult they are to comprehend in real time. Um, I, I really thought it was going to come together in a different way. But. So, uh, as someone that doesn't read Batman, when was the Grant Morrison run? Um, this is like the end of the zeros and into the teens. Um, oh, really, not that long ago. Not that long ago, and, and it's the stuff with Batman Incorporated, and when all the different Robins meet, and when Damien is a Robin, and um, so there's a lot of his extended family stuff between the okay. bat family and his literal family there's a lot of family stuff in it. Right. So, so it's like, like in the late the late 600s issues yes that's right this is it's actually 
early 600s, but it bounces back and forth between the. I was like, she said the 2000s, Steve. You're so stupid. <laughs> uh, yeah, no. So I've read the. I, I mean, I've read Batman Hush. Mm -hmm. I want to say that's probably the only Batman run. No, I've read Year One. Oh, you know what? I still haven't read Year One. It's good. All the way through. That's yeah. Frank Miller was uh, pretty good. Yeah. 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 If you make it to Superman Year One, you've passed the Frank Miller zone. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm trying to think of other Grant Morrison stuff. I think uh, was it the '80s? He did. He did the Animal um, Man run. He did the Animal Man. He did Doom Patrol, right? Right, right. And I, did he also do Green Lantern? Is that was that or the Green Arrow? I mean, I, I think he did Green. Maybe I don't know. I can't remember. Jason will or... Jason will answer in the comments. I think I have yes, that right. Please, Jason, let us know which one yeah. it is. But I think he's right. Yeah. I think you're right, Steve. He'll let us know. Which I enjoyed, but yeah, Grant Morrison, his uh, the, his writing style is definitely not the easiest all the time. Uh, very detailed, so. It feels like playing D&D &D with a really overzealous dungeon master. Does that make sense? Like the, the It does, detail absolutely makes sense. Serious. Yeah. Actually, Jim was just talking about that. Uh, we were talking about that last week offline here. Um, oh, yeah. About having dungeon masters that that just want to be, how did you describe it, Jim? Do you remember? Like you were like, they just want to make things just crazy and it turned out not being fun at all. And I don't remember this conversation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Are happened. you sure it was me? Yes. Well, it's what we were talking about. We need to do the Marvel thing. And then. Uh, so it was the last show we did. Okay. I think it was in between the last show and now. Yeah. I, I don't and know. I, 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 I've never DM'd. And right. we've talked about doing this. It, it's just not an easy thing to do because right. you have to make it interesting for the players. Mm -hmm. You have to make it for the characters. And then you want it to be fun for you as well. I don't know. It, it just it A seems lot. like an awful lot to balance. Right. Um, do you do gaming, Tara? Do you, I mean, I, I'm a novice. I, I've only yeah. done it a little bit. And I was shocked at how much it takes to even get to the first game. So she, yeah, so I mean, there's like a session. Steve is, oh, you were stuck in the drinking zone. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, I mean, there's like a session zero where you you make your characters and you 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 talk about what your world's gonna be. Mm -hmm. and, and you know, when you play Star Wars, it's pretty easy. It's it's a Star Wars universe. But when you're playing Dungeons and Dragons, there's so many different ways you can play that world. That it, it's just it's it's a complicated thing. Yeah, it really. Is. So, uh, it, well, and it's just hard to make it fun for everyone involved, and and that's the goal. So you want to keep it as small as you can, but you also want as many characters as you can. It, it's it's a crazy battle. Yeah, small, that small but dynamic. It's yeah. almost a full time job if you want to. If you want to. Uh... Be good. And if it ever becomes a full time job, how many people are in for that? Not, not me. I'm out. You know? <laughs> I, I, right. I got hog barns yeah. burned down. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> got fires to light. Huh? Yes. <laughs> so we haven't been up to much, just decorating for Christmas and uh, kind of getting a little snow outside right now. It's been stormy today, but we're not going to get oh, much. Maybe <laughs> trying. So. Really, really, really um, putting that effort in. Yeah. Uh, so. So yeah, that, that's up and going. Uh, we're going to have Christmas with my parents this year. We just finished Thanksgiving with the whole family here. So we get to go somewhere else for Christmas, which is good. Um, other than that, what I've been doing, just the dogs. The dogs are a full-time job, mm -hmm. um, which is great. Growing, growing, growing. <laughs> that's great. And Jim's been having fun with his dog. So I, I told you this story this morning. I left the dog out at 4 a.m. I go back to bed, wake up at 6.30, whatever, and look for the dog. We have a tracker on him. So he's in the yard, and I can't find him. Okay. And during this time, my youngest wakes up, and I'm getting him out of his pull-up. And finally, I'm like, okay, I'm going to go find the dog. I go out, and he's in the grove. He's chasing rabbits. So I'm like, okay. So I go into the grove. I literally walked five feet into the grove, put the leash on the dog, brought him out. I was covered head to toe in burrs. 
Oh no. So bad that I had to throw away my pajamas that I was wearing. You <laughs> couldn't even get them off. So coming out, my hat fell off my head. I don't think I told you that part, Steve. My hat fell off. I picked it up. It took me 25 minutes to take all the birds out of my head. Oh my head. goodness. That was That's funny. what I was trying to figure out how you got birds in your head. Yeah. So it fell yeah. off, but okay. it was off my head for literally seven seconds. Yeah. And it took me 25 minutes to take the birds off. Yeah. It was. Uh, That's rough. Yeah. Talk about it. It's nice at four in the morning. Yeah. No, I mean, it, it, I mean, now my pajamas were 15 years old. It was time, <laughs> but, <laughs> but it wasn't time for just being birds in my pajamas. I just yeah. because I was too lazy to take those out. So uh, it was, it was fun. <laughs> How many nice. birds did the dog bring out? It's making me wonder. Okay, so it took the time it took me to take the birds out of my hat. It took my wife to comb the birds out of the dog. Well, luckily, my dog is really good at just standing in the shower. When he comes in, he automatically goes to the shower. Wow. Yeah, it, he's. I've never had a dog that wanted to do that. That's great. He he's great with a bath. He. The only hard thing is getting him to come in. Because okay. he's a hound dog. He he smells and that's what oh, he, yeah, he doesn't uh, want to be in. <laughs> so he does not want to come back in. So and ironically, he's been sleeping ever since. Oh, that's funny. He had a big adventure. <laughs> it's every day. He runs like four miles in 20 minutes and then sleeps all day. Oh my yeah. goodness. It's good. Good for him. Yeah. Good, good, good. Yeah. Dogs are great. All right. <laughs> All right, what this thing I jumped. <laughs> watched or read scary? this week? Just some, just some good stuff you've watched, read, uh, whatever. We'll start with you, Tara. Well, um, oh, I've been watching things I'm too embarrassed to tell about. Um, okay. Reality shows and stuff. Um, and reading, we were just saying, I've been reading Batman. Um, and I'm looking forward to reading some other stuff. Actually, I have Batman in my poll this week. <laughs> So yeah, I haven't picked up my poll, but it's just one Batman book. <laughs> but um, but yeah, trying to get through the third on the bus of Grant Morrison's run for Batman, so that we can so talk what, about what it. What uh, reality shows? Oh, are we embarrassed? Ninety Day Fiance. I'm kind of hooked. Ninety Day Fiance. I haven't heard of it, but yeah, it's where it's like a couples where typically one is American and one's from some other country and they get a K-1 visa and they only have 90 days together to decide if they're actually going to make a go of it or whether it was just dating. So they have to be engaged in 90 days? Well, the, the K-1 visa gives you 90 days to go from engaged to married. So they don't do it within that They time. say they're engaged to get them over here and then 90 days to get married. They're sort of usually informally engaged and then, yeah. You say informally engaged? Yeah. <laughs> like the time where means. you know the question's coming, but it may, somebody may. Like a promise ring. Right. Yeah. There might not be a, a ring involved, but there's oh, a promise. Right. Yeah. yeah. Not like a purity ring. Okay. No. Yeah. <clears throat> the opposite. <laughs> the opposite of a purity ring, except for the. I don't think I've ever asked you, Jim. Do you do any reality shows? No. Uh, no. Every once in a while, I like try to throw on old reruns of Survivor. Yeah. Mm, I used to like it in the beginning. Yeah, I don't think I've made it past the first two episodes of the whole thing. Uh, so I was in the Army when uh, the first uh -huh. Survivor came out. And I remember my my uh, my NCO IAC yes. was, in, mm -hmm. <laughs> was addicted to Survivor. And it was all he wanted to talk about. And I found wow. that very difficult. Because that would be limiting. I was... <laughs> too worried about going out on the weekends and drinking and meeting women and <laughs> yeah, and not about something. We that watch we watch Survivor and we watch Big Brother. Those are the two. You I still watch watching those? Do you still? Yeah. I haven't I haven't been watching Big Brother or Survivor lately, but so I, I do watch cooking shows. Oh, I love those. Oh, well, yeah, we those too, yeah. yeah, like yeah. Iron Jeff and I mean I don't even know if that's still on, but I I haven't watched it in a long time. I don't know. I watch more reruns. I, I watch everything. I don't think there's uh, the U.S. Ghost is probably the only live show, and it's not live right now. So, hmm. and you haven't watched the U.K. one yet, have you? No, you've got to watch it. I've oh. seen that one. What's that one about? 
the same it's, thing it's what the u.s <laughs> ones were based off of the uk I, ghost was first so some of the, the u.s characters are the same or very similar but there's some other different characters too and, i never heard of that uh, one somehow i wasn't sure the first couple i think they put it on because the other ones because of the writer's strike won't be starting until February oh, yeah. or something so they went ahead and got the rights to that too so we've been watching that and it's, it's just as good it's just as good as the u.s one i'll have to check it out have, have you watched US? I haven't seen either. Oh, oh so, so yeah, Ghost is kind of my surprise show that I really enjoy that. Okay. And thanks to thanks Steve suggested it, and I was like, okay, so we checked it out, and yeah, it, it's pretty funny. And so wait, Ghost, just, oh, no, go Ghost ahead. the comedy Sorry. or a reality? Comedy, yes, not, not oh, yes, comedy, comedy. Oh, not a reality show. Reality show, I think, would be on something big. Yeah, I was like, hmm, maybe it's too scary. Maybe that's why I haven't watched it. But um, yeah, I have seen the, the sitcom Ghost, and I like it. I haven't yes. kept up with it properly, but yeah, reruns. I've seen some of the reruns. Yeah, yeah it's a good show. Yeah, it is pretty good. Uh, so me and my wife have been watching a lot of movies here lately. We've mm -hmm. tried watching... Uh, did, I talked about Lost Boys, right? Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. I saw that one. <laughs> What wasn't a fan of the show of the movie? I mean, uh, then we tried watching Dune, we didn't make it all the way through Dune. Dune, the good Dune, or the I'm oh, sorry, I just I think it's the newest right. Dune. <laughs> okay. I, I honestly can't, couldn't tell you that. With but, Sting in it, if Sting wasn't in it, it's not the old one. <laughs> it's Timothy it, Chalamet, it, it looked new. Let's put it that way. It looked okay. new. so, and it might be good, but we got an hour into it and nothing happened. And oh, so my wife was like, "No, we shouldn't." Sure. That. And I was like, "Okay." So we haven't watched it, nor have I read that book. Ironically, for this, you know, show I, I read it like forty some years ago. But so I, 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 uh, I still want to read the book, mm -hmm. but I don't know if I'm going to finish the movie because an hour into a movie and not, and and I was talking to Chris Evans and was, I compared it to the Batman, you know, really, because. Every scene lingered like 20 seconds longer than it needed to. Interesting. I'll have to rewatch it and see if it feels like it drags for me. I liked it so much the first time. Well, and, and that's all I've heard. Yeah, so, I really enjoyed uh, it. But yeah, every scene felt like it went on for 20 seconds too long. But hmm. Like nothing happened. I was like, let's go. Because I, I wanted to like this movie because it's a book I've been talking about reading for the last two months and I've almost bought it like seven times. I, I haven't, mm -hmm. thank goodness, but yeah, I just, uh, the movie didn't work for me. So I'm sorry to hear that. Well, well I hope it, here's the thing. I might go back to it. My wife won't. My wife was like, Nope. She's if, done. Yeah. She's, okay. she's like, well, I mean, she's not the biggest science fiction fan in any way, but, okay. but you said you started not, Logan last night, right? What's that? You started Logan last night. Yeah. So we started Logan last night. Oh, how's that been going? Uh, so it's the first time either one of us have saw that. We got thrown into that, metal. Yeah. It, it kind of reminds me of uh, Old Man Logan, uh, as far as you get thrown into something and then you don't yeah. know what's going on. And that's where that's my wife has a problem. Yeah. She's like, I don't know what's happening. Okay. And she literally throws her hands in the air and does that. I don't know what's <laughs> going on. Uh, <laughs> and I'm a little. There's picture of the Muppets. There's a picture of the Muppets. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And when she's only saying beep, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm a little more patient with a movie like that. And mm -hmm. I really did enjoy everything I've seen. Uh, and we would finish it tonight if we weren't doing this show. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, but we both like what we've seen. Uh, so let me ask you, Steve. I know Laura uh -huh. Kinney, is that her name? Yes. I know she's one of your top characters that you like. Yes, she is. Yeah. Do you know her more for the comics or from the movie? Uh, I know her from, I know her from the comics first, and then the movie. Yeah. Okay, because I, you know, I've, I've had no experience with. So her. she came out in, she came out in NYX number three back in like two thousand three or four. I think she's been around that long, and uh, then she's had a couple solo books before the movie happened as well, and then a character in the movie as X twenty three, Zero new Wolverine. So. Like, my one issue with this movie is, like, Marvel decided, hey, we're going to make an R-rated movie. Let's have a nine-year-old be in this, 
as a star. <laughs> that's that's my problem with it. Uh, and I still like the movie. Don't get me wrong. But right. like, you make an R-rated movie, and then you have a nine-year-old be one of the stars. I didn't I'm, think I'm not the that biggest one. fan of that. <laughs> uh, but yeah, enjoying it. Uh, so we also watched Edge of Tomorrow with Tom Cruise. Oh, that's so good. Yeah. I haven't I seen really that. What's the alternate movie. title of that? That's uh, Live, Die, Repeat, right? Yeah, yeah it, it's, oh, it's Groundhog Day in War. I mean, that's actually the, the title, Live, Die, Repeat, and then they changed it to Edge of Tomorrow for some weird reason. Yeah, that's oh, the other well, one. The only thing I know is Edge of Tomorrow. Yeah. So... We were uh, halfway through that movie. My wife says, I think that's Emily Blunt. And then she's like, it is Emily Blunt. I, <laughs> I did that during Oppenheimer. <laughs> I haven't seen Oppenheimer. Was in it. <laughs> is this a movie where something blows up? Yeah. That's <laughs> a, <laughs> a spoiler. <laughs> Based on a true story. Yeah. 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 Loosely. Now, did you start Mission Impossible? I know you were asking about it. No, because they don't have the first one on HBO Max. Oh, the first one's oh. so good. I wonder why we they haven't have seen it we haven't seen any of them. And then after watching Edge of Tomorrow, we're like, you know what, Tom Cruise movies, they're pretty good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they are. I enjoy them. So yeah. uh, I was gonna go down that rabbit hole, but that rabbit hole got shoveled in with dirt. So yeah. Nice. Yeah. So uh, we will finish that, and then let's see. What else is on our watch list is the Hobbit movies. Uh, American Sniper. We haven't seen that yet. I haven't seen that either. And then the Matrix. Oh, Heather, I'm coming over with Heather. Okay. Nope. With you and Heather. Okay. <laughs> the uh, commute's rough, but. <laughs> I mean, there's barely enough room on the couch for us because a darn dog takes up some. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'll be like cool. one of those people on the screen next to you, the dog. <laughs> we're we're one peeking through the window. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway. We've been uh, still watching um, Lost. We just started season five. Uh, we just watched the little Fleur episode. Uh, so just to put this in perspective, me and me and my wife have tried to rewatch Lost four times. Yeah. And we haven't made it past season one, like episode 19, right. Steve on season five after, you know, 19 years. Well, we're watching, we're hitting four to five episodes a night. Actually, we're alternating though, because oh, one night we'll watch that's Lost. That's so impressive to me. It is. Well, we sit down for dinner at five, we turn on the TV, and that's it till bedtime. Okay. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I mean, yeah. I mean, I have kids to put this. Yeah. I, I don't get out of the room until 8 30. So I'm one night we'll them. watch, I'm reading, I'm reading one night we'll watch Lost. <laughs> yeah. One night we'll watch Lost, and then the next night we'll watch Buffy. We're into season four. Oh, I love on Buffy. Buffy. <laughs> so the second, second, second watch through of Buffy, and about our twelfth watch through of Lost. And so is oh, Buffy on fun. Disney Plus? Uh, no, Buffy's on Hulu. Okay. Yeah, and so is Lost. Well, you're watching that, so you know. Yeah. Well, we own all of Lost. Oh, that's right. We okay. just can't seem to play it. And then still <laughs> reading Mistborn. Mistborn is fantastic. Oh, I'm glad Such you like Such a it. good book. Hmm. Jim recommended a book to me that he's never read before. It's what I do. <laughs> <laughs> and so I started reading. Well, I, I do audio books because I fall asleep if I'm reading. I do that too. Um, <laughs> my eyes just won't focus on the page anymore. Uh, so I do audio books. And it is, I'm in the chapter five now. Yes, yeah, it's, it's so good. It's a little bit of, I wouldn't even call it fantasy. There's a little bit of mystical to it. There's a little bit of scoundrelism to it uh, you know that sort of thing like i imagine Sounds half like the time I imagine that, <laughs> yeah <laughs> half the time i imagine the setting they're in is like the cantina in star wars and that's where we're at okay i've heard seen in the movie that's what i picture in my head so uh it's so good now there's like a bunch of books and like 12 books or something in this world something like well, that in, in the in the cosmere yeah right so the Mistborn trilogy and everything takes place in different areas from what I've read. You know, I haven't right. read one of them, right? But uh, so yeah. I think I'm going to pretty soon now, thanks to you and me recommending it to you. Right? Yeah, it's good. I, I really think you'll enjoy it. Give it a, a couple chapters before deciding, but um, yeah. Yeah. Um, if I if I buy something or 
Unless it's a comic. If I buy something, I read it generally. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, all right. We haven't had breaking news in a while. Breaking news. Great breaking uh, news. Of the year. Tay Tay. Tay Tay is the person of the year. Oh, that's right. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> oh. She did get that, didn't she? Yeah. Taylor Swift? Yeah. Yes. Tay -tay. What did you say? Tay Tay. Tay -tay. Tay -tay. Oh, yeah. All that <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what. Oh, and the word of the year is Riz. I'm a man oh, of the streets. The, the Oxford Dictionary word of the year is Riz. I did so, not know they picked Riz. That's funny. Yeah. Riz? Yes. Yeah. It's short for charisma, basically. So that, that, person's got, that person's got Riz. Charisma is like the best stripper name. And she's a great <laughs> she's a great actress in Buffy. On so, Buffy, yes. exactly. Uh, Charisma Carpenter? Yeah. Yep. Yes. Oh, yeah. Go. She's the only reason I watched Angel. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good reason. <laughs> All right. So tonight's top ten list. We'll get. We are now to that point of the show that you're actually here to watch, Jason. We're we're, uh, we're not doing a. Uh, you show me yours. Oh, oops. Yeah. Oh yes. Wow. I mean, not that I have it in the show. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not playing this one. <laughs> you're not playing this one. Okay. No. So 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 mine's a book, Tara. It's, 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 it's <laughs> show and tell. It's a. Uh, and I don't think I've shown these yet. Uh, I just started reading this. Cut away from the big screen. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we have. Yeah, uh, I'm really liking that book. <laughs> I'm, I'm like. Which one is that? It, is it's that the player's game? handbook. It's it's how to create characters and okay. the basic rules of the game. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Uh, I'm like seven pages in. Seriously, and seven pages takes me. It's just a lot of words. Yeah, that's yeah. And, and a lot of uh, the first seven pages, a lot of stuff I know, but I don't want to just skip stuff. So mm -hmm. anyway, it's it's uh, good. This is good art in that book. That'll help. Yeah, that's what you like most about those books most of the time, right? Mm -hmm. The art. Well, it, it's they're just so pretty. Yeah. <laughs> like, show us. Give us an example. I mean, I mean, you know. Who doesn't want a woman and a tiger? <laughs> I can't find anything else. Everything else is just words. <laughs> oh, that's a lot of words. Holy cow. That is a lot of words. No, there's a Gandalf looking guy right here. And small print. Uh -huh. It looks like a journal. Yeah. Well, just a lot of numbers, too. So if you like math, I'm just kidding. It, no, it's. And I'm just, oh, sorry, Jim, to cut you off. It's okay. Mine is. Uh, you know, I was looking through for books to to show, and I forgot that my mother-in-law oh. bought me these like two years ago. So it's the Game of Thrones set. Still in the wrapper. Still in the yeah. Like I said, I forgot I had them. Um, so, great gift. Yeah, it was a uh, great gift. Five books, uh, very big books. Have you read any? Of them? I, I've never read them. No. Um, I'm. I'm. I'll give it a shot. It's have you listened to any of them? I've listened to like three of them, but I haven't read any. Really? No, sure. I haven't. Not yet. That might be the way to go. It so, do you, I really yeah. like the way those books are written by character. You know, mm -hmm. each chapter is, is told from a character's perspective. So, so you've so, read them? I, I've read the first two. Okay. So, like, like uh, you get a chapter of Tyrion, and you they uh -huh. tell you from his point of view what's going on, and then you might get the next chapter from a different character. Of the same thing that happened. Mm -hmm. uh, it, 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 cool. It's really interesting. My, my so maybe this was before I was in a reading fantasy, but I got really fed up with the descriptive na nature. And oh, yeah, but I did just make it through the Lord of the Rings book, so I might yeah, give these, I might give these a chance again. You know, just, yeah, uh, you're evolving, but it's also not done. You know. The series isn't finished yet in book, so yeah, yeah. Anyway. All right. So now we can get to our top ten list. Thanks for. Uh, mm -hmm. So I threw in the breaking news, and that messed me up. That's what threw me off. Yeah. Uh, nice top ten is going to be books we've read that, 
like our top 10 books that are movies, movies that are books, books that we read before they were movies, movies, whatever, like something related to that. TV shows can go in there. I don't care. It doesn't matter. Uh, you can make up your own rules. It's all about it's talking our, about stuff. It's all about talking about stuff. So, uh, <laughs> We are ready for our top 10. We will start, as always, you do, as you do in the top 10. We don't always do it that way, but we will today with... Number 10. And we will start with Tara. So do we, like, go around? Is that the way it works? Yeah, you'll go, and then Jim will go, and then I'll go. So we'll start okay. with number 10, yeah. Yeah, and then, I mean, like, if I happen to have yours on, we might talk about it now. We might talk about it later. It depends. Well, I didn't rank mine. Is that okay? That I'm, that's I know absolutely. Totally. I, I'm just throwing numbers. That's every show. Numbers. Yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Good. I thought that I'd heard you say that a couple times before. Yeah. So what? Well, just coincidentally, one of mine was Game of Thrones. Okay. So I'm going to start with Game of Thrones. <laughs> now, have so, you read all of them? Do you have no. a favorite book out of the only, series? No, I, I've only because I listened to him. This is the downside to listening to him, Steve. When when you listen to him, it's hard to remember which time each thing happened because you're not right holding the book and looking at the title repeatedly Even if you read them that's difficult just okay i mean for me in with long series and there's a lot like you said it's a very thick description all the way through but now do you think seeing the tv show first will help with if i do the audio book with keeping stuff kind of I, yes i do yeah like knowing the character well, i watched and... i watched the first season which is the only season i've seen the whole way through mm -hmm. Okay. I watched that first season before reading the first book. And it helped a ton. Yeah. Yeah. So what are your thoughts on it all around, Tara, as far as the book t compared to the TV show? Or well, I I enjoyed both. They they diverge from one another, but I thought mm -hmm. both of them went in interesting directions. So I was comfortable, very comfortable with both. I really I ended up watching the whole series. I haven't finished right. the book, like you just said. Right. But um, but yeah, I, and I was interested in the world and some of the things they did in the books that didn't make it into the show were interesting too. So I don't regret reading them along with it. Sure. That's why it popped into my head. I, you know, uh, knowing what George R. R. Martin, so he looks like an Iowa farmer, you know, mm -hmm. like if you would think of an Iowa farmer, you wouldn't think of me, you would think of him, I think. Okay. So the stuff he writes is, profane sexually sometimes yeah uh, so it's it's I, I was like this guy's just getting off writing these books I, I i hate saying that but i think it and so i have a harder time reading his some of his stuff i don't know why i i wish i did not know what this man looked like even though you're right i only thought of the characters doing that stuff i didn't think about him thinking about doing that it, stuff <laughs> it shouldn't matter to me. It shouldn't in the least. I mean, I'm completely judging a man by his cover, not, not by the book, not by the context of the book. <laughs> Don't judge, judge a man by his book, not his cover. Yeah, yeah and, there you go. Whatever kind of crazy uh, yeah. thing you want to say here. Uh, so, But that has always bothered me when I read his books, particularly the second book when uh, they're going to the Iron Islands. Yeah, uh -huh. and, and what's his name is taking advantage of the ship woman anyway. Oh, so yeah. uh, that, that just always bothered me. It's like it's, it's like man, it, I feel like you had some disturbing issues going on. But uh, that's possible. <laughs> yeah, no, that's good. Sorry, George or, or Martin, you're more creative than I did. You did a good job. I'm just and of course his rap battle with J.R.R. Tolkien is fantastic. yeah yeah. If you're watching this, thank you. <laughs> All right, what's your number 10, Jim? Uh, my number 10 is Blood Work. Uh, Michael Conley mm. book, uh, movie by uh, Clint Eastwood. I forgot about that one. Uh, yeah, it's uh, not the best movie, not the best adaptation, which is surprising to me since it was Clint Eastwood. I was really excited about this. Mm -hmm. uh, I've read a lot of Michael Con Connolly books. Uh, this isn't one of his most well-known ones. So I was really surprised when it was getting adapted, and then there, there's a, there's a certain clue that gives away the killer. There's like this one glaring thing, and in the movie they had like the 
six-year-old boy figure it out, which I was really like, oh, that's not good. But <laughs> not a terrible movie. Definitely not something I consider good. But the book is fantastic. And so uh, blood work. Michael Connelly. All right. What am I going to start with my number 10 here? Let's see. He didn't even bother to number them. At least I wrote them down right before we started. <laughs> I will go with. Did it pop up on the screen? There oh, we yes, go. It did. Where, nice. where the red fern grows. Are you trying to make us cry? Yeah, that's a cry. Now, why this is so memorable to me is because mm -hmm. I was in the fifth grade at the time, and we would read out loud. We'd have our reading time in class and read out loud. And at the very end of the book, at the saddest parts, of course, half the class is in tears crying. Oh, yeah. uh, the other half is trying not to, but there was one kid when it, it's talking, of, and I still remember, I haven't read it since I was 11, and I remember this vividly. The part is about the dog is is cut open, and it's laying there bleeding, and this bubble of blood comes out of its mouth. And when the, the guy reads that, over here on the other side of me, this kid just hits the floor, like passes out. Oh no! Because of the description of the dog bleeding yeah, to death fantastic. and the blood bubbles, and oh man, so I would never ever forget that moment. The movie was was just as good as the book. I think I think we probably watched it a week after we finished reading. Um, but I've never read the book. Was, I've seen the movie. Yeah, uh, I, think I don't I'll think I've seen always the movie. Yeah. So, one of my favorite moments ever of growing up was in a science class where a girl was reading. I think I was uh, in seventh grade. And every time she wanted to say organism, she said orgasm. <laughs> it was the best day ever. Ever, best ever. Day ever. <laughs> that would have made it all the way through high school with my group. Yeah. Like that. That oh, it's yeah. fantastic. Oh, we, there was so much chuckling and <laughs> and the teacher like wanted to interrupt but didn't know how to. So it was just right. so it was awkward. A I'm great, the fun. great day. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Number nine. Number nine. Let Real. me see. Um, so for my number nine, I picked Kindred by Octavia Butler. Um, it, it's been a mini series on Hulu. It's one season in. We don't know if it's going to. I don't know. I shouldn't say we. It's not royal. Is <laughs> it kin kindred? Kindred. Yeah. Kindred. Yeah. Um, I'm, this is one of those books that I reread every few years. Um, and it's. It's science fiction. It's about, well, Octavia Butler is wonderful at science fiction, so that makes sense. But, and it's also been made into a graphic novel if you're interested too. But, um, so Kindred is about this woman who is, she's in the 1970s, in the book at least, and um, she starts involuntarily time traveling. Involuntarily? Involuntarily. It just like comes over her. And she finds out that she is in um, the past where one of her, um, ancestors is and she figures out that if she doesn't save her ancestors life she won't exist awesome and everything unravels from there there's a lot of really complex dynamics going on because for example this ancestor happens to be white and she is black and uh, so they were owning slaves she had to go back and in, into slavery time uh, to do this and, and she is pulled out like I said involuntarily so she doesn't even get to pick when it happens it seems to happen when the ancestor is distressed and when he's in trouble she ends up getting pulled back there so, so it's, it's almost really like it's almost like uh, the time travel portion of it is almost like um, quantum leap where there's no yes. control over getting pulled exactly. where you're yes. going I yes. love that that sounds yeah that sounds I, really good I kind of want to watch that yeah that yeah. sounds really good Kindred. Yeah. Now, yeah, you, now you don't know if the season's going to get or the series is going to get renewed. That's always a problem. No, but the first, the first one, like they made some choices that I was kind of like, well, wait, what happened to this character and that thing? You know what I mean? But, mm -hmm. but they were, I think they're reasonable. I think I would understand everything well if I hadn't read the book too. Right. But it awesome. diverges quite a bit, but in like understandable ways, I think. I so, love time travel that fights. Where did the book come out? Me too. Um, the book came out. Wow. The book came out, I think, in the 70s. I didn't get to read it then because um, I was too young then. But, um, well, I could have read it maybe at the end of the 70s. So but, kindred. Yeah. 
Kindred. And it's not very long either. So um, yeah, either the graphic novel or the or the book itself, I would recommend both. That sounds awesome. Yeah, I'm writing that down. Mm-hmm. Cool. Remind me, I'm going to ask you about it tomorrow. Yeah, I will forget. I will be here tomorrow. I'll be like, Kindred. <laughs> what I write I that. What that yeah. Awesome. Nice. All right, so All right. Little, my number nine is another Michael Conley book, uh, The Lincoln Lawyer, with Matthew McConaughey is in the movie. Oh, The Lincoln Lawyer, yeah. Yeah, and he plays uh, Mickey Haller, who is related to another of his main characters of books, of the Harry Bosch books, which is also a mini I like Harry Bosch. On yeah. Everyone. Yeah, so. Uh, I should have won my I'm going to stop you real quick, Jim. Right now, you're, you remind me of Chris and Emmett. How they just start naming all these directors and producers and stuff, and I'm just like, I have no clue who you're talking about. These I names mean, are just one funny. author. <laughs> I mean, one author. Who? Uh, Harry Bosch. Well, no, 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 no. That that's a character from this. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. I wish I had one. Michael my Conley. Michael Conley is the author. His most famous work is Her- is the Her- Hieronymus Bosch novels. He's a detective, an LA detective. <clears throat> and then he has also side on characters, Mickey, Mickey Haller, who is a lawyer, who is Harry Bosch's half brother. I can't remember exactly. Uh, so, but but they made that a movie, and and then they made the uh, Titus Welliver show on Amazon Prime, which I haven't watched. Uh, that might be something me and my wife do here shortly. Uh, anyway, I really enjoy his writing and that movie did not disappoint me i really enjoyed the movie i think there's a second movie that i had not seen the lincoln mm-hmm. lawyer did that that won an award right i, I don't I remember i don't know if it won an award for the movie or the book the, the movie let me to look it up yeah, I, mean, I don't i don't think so i didn't think it was that good <laughs> i mean it that could have been cinematography or something you never know yeah, best best foreign translation. Something like that, yeah. Yeah. It's it's been best out of than Chinese. <laughs> uh, anyway, it's it's a it's a great book. I enjoyed the movie too. So so it makes my list uh, number nine because it was second on my page. I didn't no know this, but worst. it it says that um that they also made a TV series out of it. Yeah, there is. On oh, Amazon. yeah, that's relatively new. I haven't seen any of that. Okay. I haven't seen that at all either. Uh, and that might be what I'm thinking when I said they made a second movie. It might have been just a TV series. Hmm. Nice. Gotcha. All right, all right, all right. All right, all right. All right. All right. Nice. Number. Yeah, is this a good scene for me to take off my shirt? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I like about high school? Sorry. Okay. <laughs> Number nine. 1984. Ooh, good one. Again, we read this, I think, in eighth grade, eighth or ninth grade. Um, the book is just amazing. Uh, of course, it's. I don't think I've read it. In, or no, seen it. Takes place in Europe, and it's about everybody being watched by the government and everything being controlled in our lives. Um, and we watched the movie as well. And I remember that because we had to get parental permission because there was one scene that was full frontal of a female character uh, i'm watching it for sure <laughs> no you don't know it, it's 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 a black and white movie it's not good uh, but it, it was there so we had to but no i mean just the whole concept of everything we deal with now that was the first look at it and uh there's a lot of stuff in there that they nail uh, we're not to that point yet but it's uh it's getting close so yeah, yeah really good book george orwell uh, 1984. Yeah. Have you ever read that, t- Tara? Yeah, I had to read it. I think I think in high school. So, yeah. yeah. Nice. If I had to, I did it. No. Oh, is that the way that works? <laughs> Apparently. <Yeah. laughs> I don't remember this ever coming up on a reading list or anything. So. Cliff notes of your book report. That's right. Number eight. Well, um, I'm going to go with one where the the title of the book is not the same as the title of the movie, and that is The Body by Stephen King, which made the movie Shawshank Redemption. 
Um, it's actually a short story. Short story, yeah. Yeah, it's a Bachman book, but I can, I'm calling it a book because it's a Bachman book. It's a, I've, right. I've never read the short story. It's a pretty good short story. In fact, there's a paragraph in there that it's like I a perfect movie though. sometimes. Yeah, it's such a good movie. And there's a really good paragraph about how um, how things lose meaning when you try to share them with someone else and how frustrating that is. There's a paragraph that's specific to that that I end up pulling all the time in life trying to explain things. Hmm. Yeah. But Okay, so question. How often do you ever highlight stuff when you read, Steve? Like no, no, okay. So I I like have one highlight in the Hobbit. I don't know so, some book. I was I was like I was like oh I like that and I highlight it and then I never do it again. Tara, do you? I mean, you just say you pulled that. Or I have a pencil. Yeah, I write in margins. I'm I'm oh, horrible. It was a little time. I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah, yeah that, time. I, that I I was like oh this is fantastic. But I only used the highlighter once, so maybe I should have saw that I wasn't going to enjoy the second book as much. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, so Shawshank, sorry. No, yeah, I, I, I think, of course. Look, what, think what's that movie almost, about? We never talk about that movie. It's Is almost that, yeah. universal that that's probably one of the best movies ever made, right? I don't it's know. It's almost perfect. It. Yeah, it's almost and, perfect. And I can't stop watching it. Like if I walk by the TV and it's on somewhere, I kind of I'm gone for a couple. It depends hours. on where it's at for me because it, okay. it it is a longer movie. And I, sure. I have a hard time with long movies, but you're I mean, there's no part of that movie that's bad. It's just mm -hmm. do I want to commit the next two and a half hours to sit here? Right, um, right. Yeah, it's just I I, th I think we said it best on the show. Uh, a movie about hope with gang rape. It's just crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you know, you don't get that every day. <laughs> it, it, it's hard to pull off. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. All right. What's your number eight? Uh, know my about number this eight. <laughs> I, I missed something there. I'm sorry. Sorry. Uh, my number eight is going to be uh, The Hunger Games, the second movie, because I saw the first movie before I read the book. So, the Kitchen uh, Fire? What's that? Yeah, Catching Fire uh, by Suzanne Collins. Uh, one of my favorite characters in a young adult novel would be, uh, I can't remember his name, but but the guy that was, I remember his fiance's name, Annie. It, it's, it's a guy that was real, uh, uh, built up to be really good looking and, and, and brash, but he had this love interest on the side and he was paired with an old woman to start the movie uh man i can't remember his name and it's driving me crazy he's like my favorite character in the entire series uh so yeah he was supposed to be brash and and good looking and kind of conceited and he was the deepest character out of all of them in the entire book yeah. uh, was after was trying to save his girlfriend and, and anyway it was just I enjoyed that book. It's by far my favorite of the entire series. Uh, I'm interested to see the new movie. I am too, and I haven't read any of the books, believe it or not. So no, I've not been on my wish list for a while too. I am uh, uh, catching fire characters, right? Yeah. yeah. You have to look it up, don't you? Yeah, it's going to drive. It helps if I actually type. I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. You're done. I went. I went. I, I I typed all the letters and I looked up and my box wasn't highlighted. Oh, <laughs> all right here. We, so I'll go with my my number eight, and now I'm getting tough because all these can be like much closer to the top. But I'm going to go with The Wizard of Oz. Oh, nice. So in elementary school, back in first and second grade, um, when we do. Uh, book orders. I, I started off the Wizard of Oz and then I would order the next one. And there's like 18 books in the entire series that have to do with Dorothy going back and all the different characters. And I actually bought these recently for Sherry. Um, she's been reading them because yeah. she was Wizard of Oz as well. But the first book and the movie, um, yeah, they're just, I mean, I'm not as big a fan of the movie as Sherry is, but, but the book's I just loved reading. I think that was probably 
the first books that it got me into reading fantasy type books. Uh, so the books. first book is the movie. Yes, the first book oh. is the movie. The first book came out in like 1918. Okay, when and then, the movie was out in 39. But there was a whole series of like 15 or 18 books. I'm kind of curious where they go. Well, she goes back to Oz. They go back to Oz. You know? Yeah. They find different that. different areas. You see more of the world. You see a lot more characters. Um, hmm. uh, the, I had no idea there was that many. I I, I oh, knew yeah. Return to Return to Oz because they made a movie. But. Right. I was going to yeah, say, have whole, you seen that crazy movie whole, with Teresa Balk? Have not. It's well, really, I mean, okay, I lie. I have, but it's been a very long time. I don't remember any of it, and I know it it's really movie. scary, trippy. Like if I, I'm glad I didn't know it existed when I was younger. Oh yeah, I know which one you're talking about. Now the newest one is good too. The newest movie, um, Magnificent. Huh? What? I don't know. It's, it's a Wizard <laughs> of Oz. It's a Return to Oz type story, and I'm, I can't think of the which book it's based off of. But um, yeah, so Wizard Wizard of Oz. Wizard of Oz is my number eight, and that's going to take us to. Number okay, seven. I warned I warned you guys that there's a recency effect in my in my books. Okay, sure. <laughs> but so yeah, you're gonna see another effect happen when we get to six and seven. But so for my number seven, um I was that girl that was reading all the Anne Rice books growing up. So interview, interview with, the, with vampire. the vampire. Yeah. Such a good book. Those first three books were so awesome. And um yeah, I am kind of meh about the movie and um, Cookie is working on me with the series because uh, the series didn't grab me the way it grabbed her, but I told her, like, help me see what's so good about it with you. So she's going to get me ready in time for the second season. So I. Well, Chris Evans really likes those too, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah. right. I, I've, I've made it 30% into the book. Okay. Uh, now I have seen the movie. And so when I watch a movie and then try to read the book, I have a hard time. Yeah. Which is why my list mostly is books and around. movies. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, I know what happens, and that that's what I that's what my problem with the Lord of the Rings always was is. Okay. I saw the movies. I know what happens. Do I really want to sit through nineteen hours of reading to know what happens? See, and, and uh, I'm like, oh there's that much world built that I get to find out that much more like this. It's the nerd thing, I guess. Well, and, and here's the thing is I know it continues. So will I get back to it? Eventually I will. Uh, yeah. It, it's just, it's, it's hard for me to make it through, through it. So I'm hoping to get there one day, but so I do own the book and I, I started the book within the last year. Uh, I just, now, is there more than one book or is it just the yes. one? I want to say there's four books. For the yeah, I think that one there's four, and the other one there's three, right? I, I don't know. For interview with vampire. Well, there's oh, interview sorry. with the vampire. I, I thought we were talking about the Hobbit. <laughs> no, yeah, there's interview with the vampire, there's and then the there's, trilogy there's, first. Like, yeah, there's a couple more. But then some others come after the trilogy, but they're not as tight as the first three. And I don't think she That's finished it. this series, did she? She went on to do other ones, but I don't think she ever put a close on it. Like, there's no ending. Yeah, I, I can't remember. Go yeah. On. But I remember going to see the movie in the theater. Mm -hmm. My friend's like, oh, it's a great book. And it's like, okay. And then we watched the movie. I was like, yeah, it's a pretty good movie. And yeah, it was okay. 20 years later, I tried to read the book. So, <laughs> great things work. All right, Jim, what's your number seven? Uh, my. Man, my my number seven should probably be, probably be my number one because it's my favorite book on my list. <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense. But no, uh, number one has a very specific meaning to me. So I'm just gonna, number seven. I'm going to have with uh, the book Thief by Marcus Zusak. Oh, good one. Uh, this is one of the best books I've ever read. It, it's what's up with the thumb symbols here? Yeah, I don't know why that keeps popping up. Oh, it's, I thought I you were no doing idea. that. I thought it was Steve too, but no, you asked you asked last time, last show was was doing that as well, and we can't. Maybe when I'm just it. really positive about something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it's it's happened twice tonight. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I saw it the other times too. That's weird. Crazy. 
Uh, so have you, have you even heard of this book, Steve, or the movie? No. Okay, no. so it's told from the perspective of death, which is uh -huh. weird in of itself. Uh, but it's just about a girl going through World War II in Germany, and it, it, it's it's a good story. Let's put it that way. I, I really enjoy this book. Uh, the movie is okay. It has the mm -hmm. guy that was in the Pirates of the Caribbean as a bad guy. What's I don't know. Who Jeffrey that. Rush. Jeffrey Rush. Yeah, okay. Jeffrey Rush is in the movie. I don't know where I pulled that from. I didn't even know. I I, I'm really impressed because I would have never came up with that. <laughs> Uh, anyway, he plays, he plays Papa. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a it's a, it. If you have not read this book, it's one book that I will say is fantastic, uh, and is much deeper than I can probably ever give it credit for, because I am not a deep reader or <laughs> a deep man. Right. So, uh, uh, but it, it it hit me in the feels, and it's it, it's a good movie, good book. Great book, good movie. Okay. Cool. We're on number seven, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. My number seven, this one could be higher if I remembered. Or you remembered them. Out. I remember I really liked it at the time, and it is Watership Down. Oh. It's a major TV miniseries? Well, it's also a, a cartoon uh, yeah. movie. But the book was just, I, re I remember... Yeah, how scary it was for the rabbits crossing the fields and going to uh, heading to where they were heading. I've never even heard of this. Really? really? You've yeah. never heard of Watership Down? That's, That's like saying I've never heard of Little Women. Yeah, it's one of my pre-cable books. I keep the book <laughs> in the freezer. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I've never even heard of this. Wow. But yeah, I mean, it, it. I'm not saying like. How obscure i'm saying it's weird right. what we're exposed to and what we're not i would okay. think this one would probably be considered a classic i would think um, is it like the velveteen rabbit <laughs> no i, I wish it was. was i love that story <laughs> as is my wife and now my older son mm -hmm. i've never read that i collect editions of it yeah yeah awesome so number seven, Watership Down. Oh, I changed it from, an, from your rabbit story to my rabbit story. <laughs> yeah. You did, I know. Number <laughs> six. Great. I'm coming in hot with another Anne Rice book for this one. Um, she also wrote a book that's called The Witching Hour, which ended up making the miniseries The Mayfair Witches, which I also have mixed emotions about. Um, but the book is really, really like it's hard to put down. A good book, hmm. whole different world. That's another, that's another AMC series, right? Yes, it is. AMC Plus, yeah. Yeah, I think uh, I don't know if they got a second season or not. It's the the series is a lot harder to follow than the book. So that's really. I don't want to ruin it for anybody, but yeah, it's about like generations of this family that interact with a particular being. Um, Lasher is his name. That So in the in the show, they make him a lot more ominous. In the book, he's more romantic. Like you definitely don't feel as sorry for her as you do in the show. Is uh, so. Anne Rice, how old is she? Do you have any idea? I, I think she's up there now. I think because her son, Christopher Rice, is a writer too. Um, and he does similar. Yeah. It's just, uh, has she put out anything recently? No, I think she's, I, I'm trying, I'm struggling to think if she's still alive right now. I think she's in her 90s. Okay. The, and that, I'm just trying to figure that one out for they, some reason. I don't know why that's important to me. Most of the big ones in the 70s. Yeah, she is. I know that's another, that's another show that Chris Evans has talked about. Doing. That would be, yeah. Show. That would be fun. Yeah, he's 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 big into well, he's, the, he's yeah. a Halloween guy. So oh yeah, he is. Absolutely. I just cookie. So well, the thing that that's, that's why I know it, I've heard of it. So and and with them sort of coming out a little bit at a time, like finding out about them later makes it nice because you can read it all. You don't have to wait. Right. Oh, did she finish that whole series? Well, 
depends on what you mean by finished. She definitely spun other tales in that universe. Okay. Because okay, so. I'm still trying to figure out if I like her writing style. You know, I, sometimes I do. It depends on the book. Some, yeah, I mean, well, sometimes I, I do I, and sometimes I, I don't. Yeah, I think that's any book you go. There are literally like if you read the vampire trilogy, come see me first because there's one of them that's just like the the bits from the other two. It feels like it's just making up for. Oh, remember when I didn't go into detail about that? Here it is. It, it's like it doesn't really stand by itself. It's like a complete George R. R. Martin book. Okay. Um. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think you would like. It. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, uh, like I said, I only made it a third of the way through the interview with the vampire, and I'm still deciding: do I like the way she writes? So, hmm. I was too busy turning pages. <laughs> so you like the way she writes? I did like That's the way good. she writes. Yeah. That's good. Okay. So, anything else to say about that? Um, nope. Except for the book's really hot. <laughs> That's the only okay. other. Thing. Okay. Airplane scene. Look for it. It's not in the show. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what's up with that. I have no idea. I, I have no idea. Is that the NSA or something? What? <laughs> it, it just wants people to like me. <laughs> Understand? That's true. It's always. I'm wondering if that like shows me. up on the recording. I'm sure it will. Yeah, I think so. Back. Yeah. Uh, we're on number six, right? Yes. Okay, yeah. number six. Uh, which I don't remember the movie as well as I do the book, uh, is Ender's Game. Mm. Uh, Orson Scott. It's like, who wrote that? Anyway, the, the movie has Harrison Ford in it. I and uh, I don't remember the movie. I remember the everything about the book. I don't remember the movie at all. I think uh, I've seen oh. the movie. What's that? I think I've seen the movie. Yeah, it, it's just uh, the government's taking young kids that show advancement in strategy and wartime. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, and then they're going through schooling, and then they're mm -hmm. fighting a war, and then it turns out that he's fighting a war, and he don't even know it. So right. anyway, it, it's a uh, yeah, it's really good. I enjoy it. I I, I really like the book. And I can't remember, someone suggested the book to me. And I was like, okay. And I read it and yeah, loved it. Nice. It's one of those books I check out from the library and two days later returned it because I finished it. So that's always good. Always, yeah, I like it when that happens. Yeah, that's always good. Right. My number six, Ooh. Forrest Gump. So I read this book before I saw the movie. I was actually down in Guantanamo Bay. The movie was coming out, but the book came out right about the same time. And the book is as good or better than the movie for me. Wow. That's uh that's so, impressive because I, I I yeah, I had no it, idea this book was on the map until after the movie. So it has uh well yeah, I mean it may have came out after the movie. I was just gone when the movie came out, so um, I hadn't seen the movie yet. Um, hmm. So, but there's some scenes in the book. There's all, all the stuff that happens in the movie happens in the book, but then there's some additional stuff that happens. Like he ends up going to space as an astronaut. And when they're coming back down into the atmosphere, there's problems with their capsule and he has to eject and he lands on a desert island hmm. and uh, ends up with a group of headhunters <laughs> on this desert island. Wow. And the chief, the chief is a big chess player and teaches him how to play chess. And when he comes back to the States, he ends up becoming a world chess champion. He also becomes a professional wrestler. Um, there's just a whole bunch of other little stories that come along with. That's with so it. unbelievable. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. But it is really cool. And it's, it's such a fun book. And it still has the same heart to it that the, that the movie does. As well. I'm going to have to watch that or read that. I mean. Yeah, yeah that, that I started giggling when you were describing some of the parts that were in the book, but not the movie, because it was like Tom Hanks movie, Tom Hanks movie, Tom. He, he's right. in a spaceship. Oh, that's Apollo 13. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's true. Oh, that's actually, yeah. That's hilarious. I didn't even think about that. Yeah. yeah. Desert Island. Did, mm -hmm. Yeah. My gosh. Yeah. It's kind of funny. funny. Tom Hanks has just followed that book. <laughs> that's right. Hmm. So that was my number six.
Number five. Number five. Okay, so for number five, I went back to my childhood also, and I chose To Kill a Mockingbird um, by Harper Lee. It was another one of those books that I had to read. I think it was a summer reading assignment for school, but it's a book that um, that I find myself picking up every five or 10 years, at least, to sort of see how I'm looking at it differently at that point in my life. So this is a book I've never finished because I, my wife told me I watched the movie. I don't remember watching the movie. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, it, it, it's it's something I feel has uh, significant significance mm -hmm. uh, that I should read more than just once, but I've never actually finished it. Have you ever read uh, Ghost Set of Watchmen? Um, no, I haven't. I was thinking about it, but I never got around to it. So, so I own it. I haven't read it either. Okay. Uh, Harper Lee, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, yeah, it, yeah, it, it's uh, Gregory Peck. Yep. My uncle. So when I was trying to figure out books, Tara, to, to put on this list, Sherry was like, well, what about To Kill a Mockingbird? I'm like, I have never read the book. Like, I've seen um, the movie quite a few times, but I haven't read the book, and that's the reason it didn't make my list, but... It was it was recommended to go on my list. Yeah, same here. Oh, my wife, my wife wanted it on my list too, and that's yeah. what <laughs> Bo, Bo, Bo Radley, right? Boo Radley. Boo Radley. Boo, Boo Radley. Yeah, and that was um. Oh, his name just went out of my head. The actor. Oh, thumbs up again. Consigliere in Godfather. Um, help me. Uh, Google is going to help us. Yeah, I. Robert Duvall. Thank you. I could not think of his name. I'm just looking at his face in my head. But he yeah. plays Blue Radley as one of his first movie roles. Oh, yeah. I might have actually yeah. had that because I've seen that uh, apparently, but I haven't finished the book. Yeah. It's but, a little different in the movie, too. Like, I like the way the book goes into Blue Radley more. Yeah. Yeah. I. Uh, Interesting. Yeah. I don't know why I haven't picked up Ghost Out of Watchmen yet, but it, I probably should. Well, let us know how it is because I haven't gotten around to it yet. But either am I. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, uh, five, right? Mm -hmm. Number yeah. five is another. Uh, I saw the movie was coming out. Went to the library, checked out the book, read the book in a day and a half. Uh, Ready Player One, Ernest Klein. Oh, I never read that either. Uh, yeah, no, it's it's. I love the book more than the movie. Really, and I enjoyed the movie. movie. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. It, maybe because I read the book before the movie. Probably, I'm not sure which way I would like it because I really haven't taken the time to pause scenes to look for nostalgia, and and that's all it is. You know, it, right. it, it, yeah. it's not the greatest story I've ever read, but it's every bit of my childhood in that story. So, yeah, yeah, it's it. It's a lot of fun. Uh, have not read Ready Player Two. I've heard really bad things about it, but I didn't even know there was a book. Yep, but the first one was fantastic. Good job, Ernest Klein. Nice. All right, my number five. I mean, again, these could all be equal. Mm -hmm. uh, Lord Ooh, of the Flies. Good one. So, uh, this this was my favorite book until I read the Lord of the Rings all the way through. Yeah, uh, have you seen the movie? Yeah, I own the movie. Yeah. Well, I own the original black okay. and white movie. Okay, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. I mean, what uh, what a great story! Just oh, just, it's a fantastic story. Yeah, and it's uh, just to show how society works. And I think it's still pretty relevant. Even now, yeah. I think it's exactly the same. I was going to say, it's a really useful metaphor, too. <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure I still understand Simon. I'm still not sure I know what happens to him in that story. And I've read it like five times. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, everyone else. I mean, Ralph and Piggy. Can't, yeah. go, wrong. can't go wrong with that book. It's just, no. You know, you want to... Uh, show kids what are possible in behavior, I guess that's it, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I, I think I probably should go read that one again. I mean, it's been a lot of years. Um, yeah, I... I it, the ahead. movie was also good. I, I really enjoyed yeah. the movie, and I, 
I don't know how different it is. I don't remember if it's different from the book. I think it's pretty I mean, close. It's, I mean, there's differences, but why is there not a better adaptation of that story at more modern? You know, and, and they've done them. They're just not good. I, I, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I think maybe it's hard to do now. Maybe it's, I mean, there's been, I guess, I'm trying to think, there's been a lot of stuff that's already been like it quite a bit. Um, nothing comes to the top of my like head. The Hunger but, Games. Yeah, I think Hunger Games would be about the closest. Yeah. I, you know, I, I, yeah, I, it's such a great story. I, mm. I, Yeah. All right. So me and my dad were going back and forth on on, on books. He he was on a big grapes of wrath kick at one time, and so I was rereading that book. Have you guys read that book lately? No. So yeah. it's it's the strangest ending in the world with a woman breastfeeding a grown man. Uh, <laughs> it's the strangest thing in the world uh, now. You know, I don't know what it would have been like when it came out, talking about the Great Depression and all that. But sitting in 2020, when I read it again, you know, in a life of privilege, I guess. Uh, yeah, it's it's a really weird ending to a book. Huh. Interesting. Interesting. There's so many classics I haven't read. Like yeah. I've got. I read my mother -in this year for the first. My mother-in-law's bought me a, a, a lot of the the classic leather-bound books, which like she bought me the the. You keep them in your mahogany bookcase. Like they're on my bookshelf, and I actually I took out. Um, which one did I take out to read? Oh, uh, War of the Worlds. Mm. And I started reading it. And that would have been a good one. Yeah. It's just not a good read. It's uh, I, I just I, didn't enjoy. It was rough. So have you ever tried to read Moby Dick? No, I can't do it. I've tried. I've tried multiple times. Can't do it. It's it's just way too long. Yeah. It's about a well and a guy yeah. after it. Shorten it That's up. That's not what it's about. That's just the analogy. Well, if I have it's to think life. too deep into reading. <laughs> it's not right. Okay. <laughs> Let's move on. Well, I don't even remember whose turn it is. It, it's going to be, that was your number five. That, yeah, well, I guess we're going to number four now. Oh, we're on number four. We'll be after number five. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> yep. Oh, there's a little really weird. How did that happen? Do it again. It won't come back now. No. Is it doing it after every time I do the video? Oh, thing? maybe that's let's it. Hold on, maybe. let's see. Bumped. <laughs> no, I, didn't. I don't know what that was. I thought we had it too. That's yeah, so no. somebody just keep tracking it. It's um, always on your screen. It's only on yeah, my it's always screen. On yeah, maybe yeah. Ant Man. <laughs> it could be. You never know. Number four. Um, for my number four, uh, it was hard to pick just one because the whole series is good, and I have read them multiple times, even though I was certainly not a child when they came out. But I'm going to pick the first book in the Harry Potter series, Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. Thank you for not picking the whole thing because I've only read the first book and a half. I'm reading to my son right now. Oh, perfect. Okay. Yeah. And um, so, yeah, the only reason I picked the first one instead of one of the other ones is because there's a movie marathon on this past weekend. And like with the books, when I go back, every time I read one, I think I'm in my favorite book mm -hmm. at that moment. But with the movies, I felt like, I don't know. They're all really good, um, but well, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I missed that. I'm sorry. What's your favorite? No, no, favorite? Like I said, I'm only a book and a half. I'm not going to tell any plot points. No, just okay. just the fact that we're, they grow. We're, they grow past, up on the we're past the spoiler point. It's like yeah. been like 20 it's years. It's true, but you would think after what's how long they've been out? 15 years. 20. 20, 20, 20 years. years. Yeah, I don't know. You would think I would have been spoiled on it. I have not. I don't know oh, what happened. Really? Yeah, I don't have a clue. Yeah, all I was going to say is just watching them get older in the movies made it made me sort of sad when I could see them as babies. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, I have an interesting relationship with this movie. Uh, 
with these movies and these books is I was working in Oregon at the time with a guy that loved the books. Like he would like, we're going to go get the book at midnight, the book. At midnight. Oh yeah. He's like, Whoa, you're insane. I worked in you a know? bookstore when one of them came out and it was crazy. And I, I was too, too involved with, with going out drinking and chasing skirt at that time. <laughs> chasing skirt. Worry about books being released at midnight. And, and my Mormon friend had to read all these books. So, <laughs> And so how he never spoiled me on it, I don't know, but he was into it, you know. And then I met my wife, who was like, Oh, love these books, and she's a mm -hmm. big potterhead. And 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 so and now and and once I realized that me and her were gonna get married and there's a possibility of us having young ones, which I have an older daughter, which I never read those, but I was gonna have young kids again, I I, I saved reading them. You know, I was like, I want to read these. Oh, yeah. So now we're reading them, me and the oldest one. And now I realize that I can't do that with my youngest one. So me and my youngest one might read, or the oldest one might read the first two. And then he won't be old enough to read the next ones. So I might just finish them then. And then. I don't know what the, I don't think three is any worse or any more adult. I don't know. I don't know. My my son's read watched the Lord of the Rings, so I don't want to spoil anything for you, Jim. But Bruce Willis was dead the whole time. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't even hear that. Thank goodness. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, so back to Tara's uh, pick on her list. Yeah. So we we finished <laughs> the first book just this week. Sorry, Tara. Week. That's okay. I'm fine. So you finished it just now? Yeah, we just finished the first book last week. Okay, and, and I I'm always surprised at how much my son remembers because we read it when he's going to bed. We sometimes it's a half a chapter, sometimes it's a whole chapter, depending on how it goes. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm always surprised at how much of it he remembers. And then so we finished the first book, and then we watched the movie this week. So it, it it's fun, you know. It's it's a great story for that age. Especially his age right now, and, and, and adults. I mean, it works for us, you know. Mm -hmm. so, which I'm sorry. The first time I saw the movie in the theater, um, I, I was laughing so hard because at the end, you know, they did a pretty good job with the with the movie. You know, you can't mm -hmm. get every page of the book, but I remember when we were in the movie theater and it was packed with people of all ages, and when the when the lights were about to come on, this kid right in front of me goes, oh, "What about chapter eight? <laughs> <laughs> it was just like I don't even know what was in chapter eight, but he was like, he kept he's like they did a good job, but where did chapter eight go? <laughs> so I just thought that That's was so funny. interesting because now yeah. now I'm gonna read. I can't remember what chapter eight was, so I, I can't either. So <laughs> uh, the fun part of watching those, and we watch them probably once every year or two years, is uh, you know when you go through and we watch them, we'll probably watch one a night, so we'll finish them in just over a week. Mm -hmm. And then when you go back and you see how young they were in that first one mm -hmm. after seeing it years later, which I think, you know, filming a movie a year made that so awesome. Like yeah. Kids growing with, with the characters is just fantastic. Well, that's, that's exactly that I think what made them great. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Even though I haven't read them or seen them. <laughs> that's what made them great. <laughs> uh, yeah. So I'm like, I'm trying to think of now with, with what uh, Tara was saying. Tara, Tara, I already forgot how you say it. It's okay. Tara. 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 I apologize. No, he was okay. drinking earlier. Don't worry. He's the only thing I remember not being in the movie that was in the book was Hermione doing the the flames at the end. She had to do the potion test that oh, that's right. that Snape put in. That's the only thing I remember not being in the movie, just off the top of my head. They don't riff as hard about her hair in the movies as they do in the books either. They don't what? They're always talking about riff. I was saying they they are always making jokes about how unruly her hair is, and in the books they talk about that a that lot. Book. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Should we? Go <laughs> yes, please. Okay, we're gonna go to uh, from a kids movie to an R-rated movie. Okay. Uh, Silver Linings Playbook. Oh, that's a good one. Uh, the what? Silver, Silver Linings, Linings Playbook. Playbook. Where Jennifer Lawrence won her Oscar, you know, yeah, uh, and Bradley Cooper, Bradley Cooper, yeah, and Robert De Niro. I've never heard of it. 
it's good. You'll like it. I'm not sure. Uh, oh. <laughs> I didn't read the book. I saw the movie first. So. Okay, so the movie is more likable than the book. Okay, I did not know the that. book. I mean, and it's about Philadelphia Eagle fans. Okay, which I relatable. Love, you think I love. I'm an Eagles fan. Oh, me too. I can't stand them. I'm the an hour world. south of Philly. You what? A rough week. I'm an hour rough south of Philly. Oh, it was yeah, a it's been week. a rough week yeah. here. <laughs> yeah, it's. Been. But it, the uh, in the book, there's so crazy fanatical fans. <laughs> That's right. I forgot, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that was. No? No. Oh. Yes, I do. Oh, yeah, I know that. Okay. Nice. <laughs> I've got my sorry to interrupt. I got my Christmas village set up in here and it's all 49ers. Oh, um, I bet that's cool. So they, they all light up. This could have been my show and tell. Sorry to interrupt you, Jim, but um, so they look like. Can we get back to talking about the Philadelphia Eagles? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, so, Silver Linings Playbook? Silver Linings Playbook. I have never heard of that. Yeah, uh, no, uh, yeah, it was uh, it was a pretty big deal when it came out in the movie. It uh, was. Book? In the teens. It came out in the teens, I think. Mm. Yeah, it was right before me and my wife got uh, Probably 2014. Somewhere hmm. in that neighborhood. Close to there, yeah. 13, yeah. 12, 13, 14. Uh, I used it in a class then, so I know it had to be out there. I, I do not recommend the book. Okay. It, it's it's pretty miserable <laughs> as far as, especially his dad. It, yeah. It, it, it was a, a bunch of characters I did not like. Okay. So Which harder is, to Yeah, it to generally them. doesn't work. The movie made him a little more likable. Yeah, I was gonna say they didn't like shy away from showing their downfalls, but they, but they did make them likable. Yeah, and, okay. and his dad don't have a single redeeming quality. If oh, I correctly. In okay, the I'm staying away from the book then. Yeah, it was it reminds me of again, Chris Evans. I didn't like the character. I didn't like the plot, but I kind of liked the movie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I wish I could remember what he was talking about when he said that. Yeah, I, don't know which yeah, one I get a kick out of that too. It's like, how? <laughs> We're at number four, right? Yeah. Yep. All right, number four. The stand. Oh, good. I was going to put that in mind, and I didn't get it. Um, I mean, it is so good. The book's good. The miniseries is fantastic. Um, yeah. So, I mean, Stephen King is an odd writer, anyway. Um, the, the ending of the book, like most of his stuff, I don't know if he just gets to the end and gets bored. Um, he kind of rushes things a little he bit. Kind of final wrap scene. it up the end. Yeah. yeah, just wrap it up. I'm done here. Wrap it up. I'm already yeah. starting my next I, one. I would say this. He probably has more on, on our list than anybody else. He does. Yeah. yeah I mean, I could have went with, I could have went with four or five of his. Yeah. Well, I had to stop myself from putting more Stephen King on this list, for sure. Right. Yeah. I mean, I almost put Stand By Me on there. I was going to uh, say, that could be an was, episode. Yeah, there was a couple, but um, so yeah, I mean, it's just it's just a great, a great book. The the uh, religious message that's in that movie. I've is, never seen the book. I've never seen okay. the book or read the movie. Oh, never read the movie. Uh, I recommend it. I mean, it's I when I finished watching it, especially uh, I think it was Five Nights on NBC back in like 1988 or something, but. Um, yeah, it, it just leaves you feeling good. Like there's some there's some pretty dark stuff in it, but it leaves mm -hmm. it leaves you feeling good. I think it did for me. Anyway. Interesting, because yeah. I would have thought that would have left you feeling bad just from it goes it goes very deep no, into faith, up. very deep yeah. into faith in this movie, um, which is really interesting the way he writes it. Nice. So uh, the stand is my number four. So you've you've read this or watched it, Tara, or both? Both. I've read it um, and I've watched it. And I th isn't there more than one adaptation, or am I thinking about The Shining? Maybe I'm thinking about The Shining. No, there's a. I mean, they have. The, there's a new series that's out, a TV series that's out. As well. I have not I'm seen the new one. I believe, but um, yeah, there's a couple adaptations. This is so interesting, especially when we get to my number three. Hmm. Okay. Well, here we go. Uh, 
agree. <laughs> yeah, I would right. want to see a horse race after you do that. I know. <laughs> of Derby Sunday. I mean, Derby Saturday. Um, so for mine, um, again, the recency effect, <clears throat> I'm going with Gone Girl by uh, Jillian. What is her last name? I have it written on my other. I can't think of her last name right now. I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, the book, um, the movie, was, it's like you said before, the movie was good. The book was excellent. <clears throat> Gillian Flynn, that's her name. And um, <clears throat> excuse me, have either of you seen the movie or read the book? I'm trying so to we watched we watched the movie this year. We were in a, a stage kind of like Jim and his wife are doing now. We were watching a movie of different genre every night nice. that we hadn't seen, and this was in there. And that's we not both, what we're doing. No, I know that. But we both loved this movie. Mm -hmm. uh, having not read the book, I didn't have anything to compare it against. So probably reading the book, I'd look at the movie and say, yeah, the movie was average. But for now, yeah, the movie is fantastic. The movie. I love that movie. Be great. Who's in this movie? Um. Ben Affleck was the lead guy, and oh, her name just left my head. Um, Rosam Rosamund Pilk is that her name? I, I get this movie confused with. Uh, uh, I yeah, know, I know what you're the one with of. Morgan Freeman and Casey Affleck, where they. Oh, um, yeah, uh, Gone Baby Gone. Yeah, I get those yeah. confused. So, uh, yeah, okay, I have not seen this. So. Rosamund Pike. I was okay. So I said it weird, but <laughs> yeah. Ro Rosamund. Yeah. Rosamund. Yeah. And Robert so, Pike. yeah. She's really so good. And in the book, you like, I have a friend that refused to finish the book because something happens in the middle that, that you know in the movie, but you don't know it's coming in the book. Um, gotcha. Yeah. I don't want to ruin it. So, yeah. Oh. Man, yeah, it's good. I like that movie a lot. That's, I think that was, I was doing the, uh, oh, what's the website where you can, with all the movies, uh, IMDb? You, can track, you can track them. Um, Letterbox? Letterbox. Oh, yeah. yeah. And I think, I think I had that very high in my rankings. I need to go do that. Sure. I have that app, but I always forget to, I just use the IMDb and forget to put yeah. them in Letterbox. I'm, just, I'm, I'm too lazy to rank stuff. And well, I don't even. I just I just rank them after I watch them. I go in there when I when I put them in there so that I remember that I've actually seen a movie. I just that's put a good it in idea. Position where, See, where, if I know, wait, I just only know what I liked and didn't like. I don't remember. Yeah, yeah. And else. recency bias bias would completely ruin my ranking. You know. Yeah, it does. Race was the greatest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, what's your number three? Recent, but. All right. Uh, Number three for me is another Stephen King story and movie. It's the De the Dead Zone. Good one too. Uh, also a miniseries, movie, mm -hmm. miniseries, and book. It's the first yeah. Stephen King book I ever read. Uh, it's still my favorite Stephen King book. Uh, I, I just love the ending of of. Uh... Oh, there it is. <laughs> Yeah, I, I just love the ending uh, of, of this character being shamed out of politics, I guess. Uh, yeah. I can barely remember. I need to reread it. Yeah. It, it, was, it was my favorite until I read The Stand, ironically. So. Well, that makes me want to read The Stand. Yeah, that just lodged oh, it. The Stand is good, yeah. At least watch it, yeah. Yeah. Well, isn't it like 19 hours long? No. Is it? Like, no, it's like 10 hours total. For the so what, what, what's, yeah. the, what's a mini series he had out that was? It was a stand. Oh, man. And it wasn't that it was long? Like, it was like ten, five episodes of two hours each. It might have been longer. I don't remember exactly. <laughs> I can't remember either. Yeah, I, mean, I, don't, know, I don't know if I'd ever make it through that. It's a big saga, though. You would have to break it down into more than one movie if you tried to make it. Into uh, I would have to break it down into like three weeks. I'm mean, just trying to think of some other stuff I could put on the list of his. Um, of what? Well, of, from his? I really yeah. do like the book, The Shining, more than I do the Kubrick movie. Really? And, yeah, and I don't hate the Kubrick movie. I've never seen Lang it. Langoliers is a good one. Oh, yeah, Langoliers and 1123. Dark Tower. Yeah. Dark Tower is. 
I remember when the Dark Tower came out, people so much of the modern stuff I haven't read. And somebody told me Gerald's game got adapt adapted, which surprised me given what the novel was about. Uh, 1963. Uh, is it 63? Yeah. Yeah, that's the one. The assassination. Yeah, that's yeah, it's out there. Um, oh yeah, that's, that's a Hulu special, isn't it? That's a Hulu. Yeah. Show. Yeah. With uh, and Franco. Under the Dome was him too, wasn't it? Under the Dome has a TV show, yeah. yeah, which never finished. Yeah, I was. I kept waiting for that to come back. Yeah. Rumor has it him and his son, Stephen King and his son, created a G.I. Joe character. Oh, I can't remember his name. Crystal Ball. Okay. Anyway. Have you watched Castle Rock at all? I've only seen a couple episodes. I didn't have Hulu at the time that it was coming out and getting a lot of hype. Good misery, that can make the list too. I mean, yeah, oh, okay. Misery. Misery. And and Dolores Claiborne too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's just ridiculous. There's so many. Gosh. So many. Man. Yeah. He's a factory. Yeah. Uh, what's the other? Uh, oh, um, the one with the trucks. The oh, um, oh, with, with the Transformers. Is. What's that? I'm just joking. I said Transformers. No, oh. it, it close enough. It's a Deuce and Machina situation. Um, Deuce and Machina. How do you? What is it called? It, there's something with the. And maximum overdrive. Maximum. Okay. Maximum. Maximum, I overdrive. Maximum. maximum overdrive. Yeah. That came in a different place that time. Did you see that? It did. Oh. It's really freaking me out. Oh, I bit. got it. Okay. Yeah, I'll do it. Nope. I think I have to smile. Wait, I think maybe did I figure it out? Let me see. No, I thought I figured it out. I thought it was when I went to a different tab and then came back, it was popping up because it did like four times in a row. But. <laughs> Oh, yeah, see, there it it's goes. I'm changing can... tabs and then come I think back. I have to smile and stick my thumb up. <laughs> but it never <laughs> comes to our It doesn't come to our bubble. So that's so weird. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. All right. So that was, did I get my number three? No, I didn't. Did no, I. you haven't. We, we okay. Uh, number three. Oh, man. I mean, how do I want to do this? I want to just do it every time you do it, Jim. <laughs> that would be cool. That would be cool. Never any uh, oh, it's so good. Yeah, the movie's a little cheesy, but uh, the book the is just no, just a book about a book that you read that takes you into the book. I mean, it's just oh, the like meta. If, if meta was a term back then, this would have been the most meta thing ever. Um, yeah. I've recently so, tried to show this to my boys. Really? Yeah. They, That's right. You said they didn't like it, right? They didn't like it. Yeah. Oh. It's a little trippy. Like, it's a little. They're a little young for it, which I thought would they'd be a little young for uh, Jumanji, but they weren't. So, like, it's know. just coming out of the era where LSD was very popular. Oh, that makes sense. Now that you a say lot that. of the characters are very LSD ish. I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. They look like all the Sid and Marty Croft shows when I was a kid. Yeah, right. They do. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's just a great book. It's a, a fa another fantasy book that's just, I mean, who, when you're, especially when you're a kid reading that, just the hopes while you're reading it, maybe I'll get pulled into this book. Yeah. Which is very Jumanji. I'm surprised that. Uh, yeah, that's true. That's yeah, they love it. Jumanji. I, th I think because there's more animated, not animated, but animals. You know, yeah. Like the monkey oh, yeah, it was a lot busier. Like yeah. Yeah, they, they really got a kick out of that. Right. Okay, so I did a word association thing by accident. So I went from Gone Girl to Girl on the Train. <laughs> because that was also a book that I had read. Mm -hmm. um, the book, uh, I, I actually never saw the movie. But the book was... Um, was really good and really evocative um, about this woman whose life has sort of fallen apart and she rides a train back and forth every day and someone that she sees out the window, she gets really interested in a rear window sort of way about what's going on in the in the, one, in the woman's life. Girl I have a train? That's, that's yeah. Emily Blunt, right? Uh, I wanna say yes, but I'm not sure. Let me check. Uh, it is, yeah, I'm just looking at it now. Okay. Emily Blunt, Emily Blunt Justin Thoreau, Lisa Kudrow, yeah, I don't. I need to go back and watch that because I like all those people. Yeah. Yeah, but unless Lisa Cruz was playing Phoebe. 
That's true. She's always Phoebe to me. Well, so I guess it's her someone else. Like her too. Or Ursula. Well, <laughs> Ursula and Phoebe are in the same universe, so that feels okay. Yeah. Yes. Well, they're, yeah, they're in the same show. And, mm -hmm. and <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> Girl on the train. I mean, I've never heard of it. Yeah, it, I yeah. I mean, go ahead and continue about it. I love it. I love this movie. Well, the I just loved all the the level of detail in the movie and like the things that she was going through. It's a person falling apart basically, and um, but the little details about it, like you it you cringe with her and you understand how she gets drawn into things the way she does, and she just keeps doing more stuff. Like I guess I have a friend that can't watch things where people make bad decisions. She did not like this at all. Really? Yeah, she was the same you one. Watch any movie, movie where people make. I, well, she has a few that she will say is it's okay for her, and she can also watch medical procedural shows. But we used to have to watch HGTV because she couldn't stand the storylines of anything else; they were too upsetting. Huh. But, um, but in, to be fair, she has a really stressful job as a criminologist, so maybe she doesn't want to take her home, her work home with her. Right. <laughs> I think is what's going on there. But right. yeah, there's something about that book that just really grabbed me up. And uh, I thought it was really vivid and all that sort of stuff. So that's yes. mine. What's your number two, Jim? My number two is a, uh, apparently, apparently it's a series of books. I did not realize this. I've only read this one. It's The Bone Collector with uh, oh, by yeah. Jeffrey Deaver. Uh, Leak and Rhyme is the name of his, the character. I don't, I did not realize this was a whole series of books. Uh, and now I might have to check some of out because I like the book a lot more than I enjoyed the movie. Uh, the movie had... Uh, yeah, the movie faltered a bit. Angelina Jolie and... Denzel Washington. Denzel Washington, yeah. Is it Angelina Jolie? Yeah. Huh. I think I would have remembered that. I didn't. She uh, wasn't She wasn't peaking yet when it came out, I don't think. It was the front end before Lara Croft. What's that? Uh-uh. Have you seen a TV series? It's a movie. Have you no, seen a TV series? series? There's a TV series of The Bone Collector? Absolutely. Oh, yeah, they, only, they only had one season. It was on NBC. We watched it. We loved it. It's called Lincoln Rhyme Hunt for the Bone Collector. Huh. I didn't know there was a TV series. I wonder if it's streaming anywhere. I, I remember I was, in, I was in AIT in the Army, and I just uh, went to the PX on a weekend pass, and I was like, I need to find something to read. And I saw something that said, soon to be a movie. So I got it. I read it. Okay. I really enjoyed the book. Didn't really enjoy the movie though, but same. Yeah, TV series stars Russell Hornsby, who was really hmm. good. Oh, I don't know who that is. I can't yeah, picture. No. Him. Uh, yeah. <laughs> there it goes again. I figured out how to do it. So, did you? I want to know oh. how to do it. <laughs> <Don't>. <laughs> I have no idea why it doesn't. It's a bit precious, isn't it? <laughs> but oh, there you go. It happens a lot. It happens a lot. Well, why does it only happen on yours? I don't, I don't know. Have you tried doing it? Yeah. I've... Oh, I, I, I don't watch you. <laughs> I was watching both of you. Both did it. I try. I even tried it. Yeah, it's not. It only works for yeah. Jim. So, bone collector. That's awesome. That's a good one. Yeah. The, the yeah the TV series is good. It's really good. Hmm. I'm gonna have to keep my eyes open for that. Yeah, check it out. Maybe for Peacock. Sure. Who's? Yeah, it would be definitely be on Peacock. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Okay. What's your number two, Steve? Yes. Yeah, Steve. Okay. My number two is going to be. Oh, <laughs> good choice. That's my number one. Really? Yes. That's my first book. Your number one is not Lord of the Rings. Wow. No, I went with books that I read first. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Me too. So. Oh, okay. And so I probably have more to say about this than you do. So this is the first <laughs> book I remember ever reading. It's the first book I ever read my daughter. Uh -huh. it's the first movie I ever took my daughter to. Oh, right. Oh, that's so cool. yeah, this this book it I'm reading. We just started with my youngest. I just started the Chronicles, and I so we started the Magician's Nephew. So we're about uh -huh. 50, 50 pages into that right now. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I, this series pretty high on my list as far as important right. with me and my kids so right yeah so yeah yeah i mean it's just it's great and, and the movies i like the movies too they're not as good as the books but the the visuals that you know they just, it looks great um, yeah uh, and it's it's just a total fantasy world the thought of opening up a cupboard and walking into it and 
going to a different land. Well, have you read the other books? Uh, I think I've read the first two. Maybe have I read the third? Uh, have I read the? Uh, yeah, there's a lot. I'm trying. I can't. I'm trying to remember if I read the third. I haven't read them all. No, I've read the first two or three. Uh, so I, I have not. The only one I've ever yeah. read is the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Yeah. And so reading the Magician's Nephew now, it's like it's really weird because yeah. it's not. I, I haven't been to Narnia yet. It's in Narnia Chronicles. Why? Why am right. I not there yet? <laughs> right. So I'm half done with the story. I'm not there. So uh, yeah, I'm. I'm, it, I'm kind of interested in to figure out how they all connect and. Sure. Well, so. Yeah, this would be an interesting yeah. adventure. All right. Number one. <laughs> wow. It's <an> extra special. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> it's making me mad that it won't do it for the rest of us. <laughs> <laughs> You don't, have this as hard term, as I can see. you don't have this term. That's crazy. Okay, well, for I, I definitely did the same thing you did, Jim, in terms of like if I hadn't read the book before I saw the, the picture, I didn't put it on my list. For mm -hmm. mine, I chose Neil Gaiman, American Gods. Um, the book was really awesome. As there's a lot. And even though it was made into a mini series that had multiple seasons and never really finishes, it still doesn't cover everything in the book and it covers some things that aren't in the book too. But um, American Gods, I had someone tell me that if I wanted to read Neil Gaiman, my first two books should be Anansi Boys and American Gods, and they were not wrong. Those are good places to sort of jump in. It's not that they happen in any order or anything like that, although Anansi does appear in American Gods, the show. But um, but yeah, the whole idea that, <clears throat> that when people immigrated to America, that they brought something of their culture with them and including the gods that they used to pray for when, when there was polytheism. <clears throat> My voice just went out all of a sudden. Sorry, I need a drink of water. And um, we, we never drink on this show. That's not allowed. Yeah. <laughs> I um I was I'm suffering wine, but I ended up with water in my wine glass instead. <laughs> you turned wine to water. That's impressive. That's yeah, like that's terrible. that would be, that would be my superpower, <laughs> right? The book title: Water in My yeah. Wine Glass. <laughs> water in my wine glass. It sounds like a country song. <laughs> I think I'll need to work on that. But um, but yeah, such interesting lore and like things like leprechauns. You never really think about what it meant to have that magical creature and like they're a figure that exists in the universe of American gods. And there's just a lot of stuff that goes on. Did any of you ever see any of it on Hulu? No. It, it, it goes pretty far afield before it ends. And there were issues apparently with making it that made that happen. But I still really enjoyed watching uh, what I saw. Sounds cool. Sounds yeah. good. Hmm. But I definitely recommend the book. But start with Anansi Boys because that will draw you into Neil Gaiman's universe. What's it called? Anansi boys. Anansi. Mm -hmm. A n a n s i boys. Hmm. Started off buying the books for my cousin that got me stuck on Harry Potter. I was trying to pay him back, um, gotcha. and um, I ended up falling for the books more. So, so Anansi boys and Kindred. Okay. Kindred. Yeah. I'm definitely looking forward to Kindred. Yeah. Yeah. I, I already forgot about that. that. So remind me tomorrow. I, I haven't written it down. Thanks. Yeah. Nice. So. All right. Nice. And, and we know yeah. Jim's number one, huh? Yep. And just looking at my list now, Jim, I think I didn't purposely do this, but I think all of these books I read before I saw the movies. I, I didn't mean to do it that way, but I, I believe that because most of them were read in school before they showed us the movies. But mm -hmm. um, my number one, uh, Lord of the Rings. There you go. So we read this in fifth and sixth grade, um, The Hobbit, and then The Lord of the Rings. Uh, and I've read, it's probably the only books I've read more than once. I'm not big on repeating books, um, but I've read this several, several times. Ask, ask Sherry. Repetition is not Steve's strong point. No. <laughs> no. It's not. <laughs> it's not. No, she would attest to that, yeah. yeah. She doesn't care. <laughs> as, long as, you, as long as you get through it, repetition doesn't matter. Just, just get to the end and get it over with. Yeah. 
one time is good enough. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But I mean, this is, this is just so obvious for me. I mean, it's just yeah. the whole world of it uh, is fantastic. I don't know. I was, I think I mentioned this to Jim the other day. What, you know, cause we read this, we just finished the Silmarillion while well, Jim farther back than me, but, and of course that leads kind of into the Hobbit and Lord of the Rings. What is going through a writer's mind to keep all this stuff, you know, the world building, the names, the, this isn't like that. Jim and Tom and Bill and Joe. This is just it names that, would have been if it that you can't it. remember. And they've got it all mapped out. I mean, it must take years and years and years just to get the story in your head before you put it down on paper. They must have to catalog it like in that book that you have, Jim, about the DMing. Yeah. Earlier for your show and tell. I can't think of the name on the oh, cover, but Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah. Yeah. yeah like, they must write it all down like that. I would have to have it all around me, like on well, and, and, and not just that, but they've published like six books since he died out of his notes. It's crazy. Right. You know, so well, he must have had prolific notes, yeah. Yeah. Uh so I I had so The Fellowship of the Ring is my favorite movie out of the books but it's my least favorite of the books out of the books i, I find it very hard to read the first one hmm. but well, you said you don't like gandalf in the books at all i do uh, not like way. gandalf the gray i like gandalf the white i do not like gandalf the gray uh but e even past that yeah it's i, I think he found his stride as far as writing after the first one there, there's not as much meandering you know what i'm saying it's, it's there's more a plot let's do it let's go where fellowship i feel like there's a whole lot of hey look over there hey so what's that probably, but when you build a world like there's that you're telling everyone to notice yeah. it yeah I, I mean i i don't disagree with that at all mm -hmm. I, I just i had a very hard mm -hmm. i tried reading the fellowship four or five times before I broke down and bought the audio book and listened to it. Maybe that's what I need to do because I've never gotten through that book all the way either. If yeah, it, it, it's it's a I'm hard not proud read. of it. It's a hard it. it's a hard yeah. read. It, it really is. However, the second uh, Return of the King and, and well, not the second, the Two Towers, Two Towers. Return of the King, Two Towers, yeah. are fantastic, <clears throat> and and it's different enough from the movies to where I was like looking for the differences you know and, oh, and, wow. and oh that's awesome and so i it it became it took the place of the lord of the flies is my favorite book i count it all as one so he's big on lord of the books what's that <laughs> yeah if there's if, if the lord's in the i book, like gone he likes lord of the yeah <laughs> you know, if the lord's in the book it's my favorite book lord, lord of war yeah <laughs> great movie uh, have you seen that movie no oh, yeah. lord of war what is it with Nicolas Cage? Anyway, it's a great War. Yeah. I'm going to have to write uh, that down too. Yeah. So but, um, yeah. It's great movie, may be a little overstatement. It's a really good movie. I really enjoy the way it's told. You know what I like now is The Two Towers has a whole different, not a whole different meaning, but knowing the history of The Two Towers after reading Silmarillion, the whole, like, what they actually are. Hmm. What they mm -hmm. were created for and who they were created by. Have you read The Silmarillion? You probably, I mean, it's, Tara, Silmarillion is a brutal, brutal read. Is it? it is. It, oh. It's good. Don't get me wrong. But it's good in a, uh, I like this chapter. I hate this chapter. I love this chapter. Okay. I hate this chapter. It, so it's like reading the Old Testament for the New Testament. The first, for, the, for the literature The first part. half. Yeah. The first three, four, five chapters. Like, it's just literally. Oh, I really, movie. really like the first chapter. Where they talk about the creation of the world, mm -hmm. I really enjoyed that. Uh, but me and Steve had talked about that. There's a chapter in there where they talk about the, where everyone goes. It's, it's just geography. A written map. Yeah. yeah. It's very hard. It's chapter ten, I believe. It, yeah. It's the hardest chapter of any book I've ever even kind of enjoyed to read. It's, and it's funny though, because in the forward, you read the forward, and it tells you there are. A, bunch of names and a bunch of locations that you're going to hear about most of them don't matter it tells yeah. you that right wow. now. Like, so, okay. <laughs> yeah 
but you know it, it's 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 a fun read but yeah lord of the lord of the rings just the movies i was you know so impressed with i mean they miss a lot of the book but they uh, and, and they're, they they're really them. accurate though as accurate as you can be without it being a 10-hour movie like and, yeah. and and i understand the people that say that uh far mirror wasn't done right and because he wasn't done right but still the movies are really good i mean you are like pippin right i mean you got so so the hobbits were my biggest problem in the movie compared to the books it's right Pippin, i think got a, a raw deal in those movies <laughs> pippin was a great character that they made look really stupid in the movies <laughs> that, that was right. my biggest takeaway uh, but but it would have taken too much time to or too, you know not too much and, time too much and I didn't need to, that you know what I'm saying I right. I, I still love the movies it's not yeah, like exactly. I can watch those movies and say well, I can't believe they yeah. did that but I understand why you had to do some stuff you know I'm, I'm not yeah cool so all that. right so any other than more Stephen King books any uh, honorable <laughs> mentions to throw in. Yeah. I, I have three of them. You said you had 13, right? Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I had Jurassic Park. Oh, that which, is a good one. Which I, I read. I can't. I don't think I read that before the movie. I read it after the movie, too. Yeah. Uh, Michael Crichton, just mm -hmm. pretty good. Uh, I, I had the Harry Potter Sorcerer's Stone, which you had on your list. Oh, come on. Lord of the Rings. That's about it. Okay. Yeah, that's yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. Good list. I don't, other than what, Narnia was the only one we doubled up on, and that was it. So we're definitely so we, in the under. We hit the under. We had over under before we started on how many we would oh, did match up on. I figured two to three because I, I thought he would have Lord of the Rings on his list, but because yeah. he had, had read it first. Um, yeah, I did not read it first. So, awesome. I mean, it's number yes. one on my page, but it's not. Yeah. It's my number favorite. one on our hearts, but not on our lists. <laughs> That's right. right. Make it make sense. <laughs> make it make sense. Anything else to add before we finish up here? No? I don't think so, except I was really happy to join you guys. Thanks for yeah, having thanks me. Thanks for coming on. Always fun having people on the show with us. Uh, I mean, no one watches, but it's fun to talk to people. <laughs> That's right. Like I always tell Jim, it's like a marriage. It's always better when you have that third person in there because <laughs> after a while, it gets stale. So. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Heather agrees. I don't. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, that, yeah, that's going to do it for us. Uh, Tara, again, thanks for being here. And tell uh, all of our viewers, which include um, Jim's mom and Jason, uh, where they can see you elsewhere. Um, you can find me. Yeah, I forgot to put it on there. Um, on Twitter or X or whatever we're calling it, uh, you can find me at Film Noir Girl with three R's and no I, or on um, Instagram at Tara Loves Noir. Um, and again, please listen to the end pod on all the pod listening things. <laughs> pod listening things. I did a really wonderful job. You can those really boxes that play yeah, <laughs> all those places that play the the podcast, and uh, <laughs> for, for one night only, also on YouTube. Uh, occasionally we decide when we want to do it. So awesome. thanks again. That is awesome. Yeah. Thanks for being here. And Jim, where can we find you? <laughs> anywhere, anywhere you like. That's right. All right. So again, that is going to do it for us. We are midlife vices, the booster gold of YouTube shows. Thanks for watching <laughs> next week. Uh, we may have a show. We may not. I don't know. We'll figure out some talk. Merry Christmas. And we will see you next time. Take it easy. Thank you very much. <laughs>